Hello and welcome, my name is Jason Baker. I'm working on a project which I'm calling Project Kitchen Sink, I'm making a 16 terabyte launch box implementation, throwing everything I can on it. And today I'm working with TechnoParrot. So I've been going from as old as I can to as more um, as, as most recent as possible. So what I'm doing now is I'm manually having to add all these TechnoParrot games, but I figure I'm getting kind of good at it. So let me show you how exactly um, I'm doing it. So the first thing is, is what I'm gonna have to do here is uh, let's uh, find, let's go find the ROMs. Let's take this one here, Troubled Witches AC. So I've already uncompressed the file here. And what you're looking for is one of the game executables. Now, sometimes they could be game.exe, sdemon, um, exe, or some other form of an exe. Just don't use the DX loaders. Uh, those seems to be always coming up as viruses. So here we have the game exe. So what I'm gonna do is just simply go to my Techno Parrot and click on the hamburger menu, click on add game. And then I'm gonna find the name. Hopefully it matches, so Trouble Witches AC. And there's another one for Nessica X Live. The folder doesn't seem to match, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one. And sometimes you get clues from within TechnoParrot as to what you need to do. So a quick way to do it is to just simply click on More Info. Go to More Info and see if there's actually info. No, there's really nothing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go back here. Um, so in that case, there's no additional info on the website. So what we need to do is simply go to Game Settings and click on the blank space there, and it will pull up an Explorer-like window. And what we'll do is I was working on Transformers, so I'll go over here to Troubled Witches AC. We're going to just double-click on Game.exe. Uh, so notice here I have generally window because I'm actually remote desktop into my machine that's doing this, and it's easier to run a windowed mode than full mode. So I'll change that later, and I'll show you a cool trick on how to do that. So we'll go ahead and click on save, uh, save settings, and now we can launch the game, see if it works. So we get the open parrot loader, and this is always good when it says DLL loaded, resuming game. And in the upper left hand corner here, it looks like we've got a game. I don't have the ability, whoops, it doesn't want me touching it. Could be failing, right? It's the first time I've ever done it. Well, it's the first time I've ever touched this game. All right, well, let me go ahead and close the program. Let's just see here and we'll cancel out of that. Could be because I was trying to drag the window too early. There's quite a, uh, quite a bit of initialization these games need to do. So it's good to actually do hands off. And what I found when I've been using a remote desktop, if I switch away and I don't, I'm not actually active on the screen, the game sometimes won't load. So we're gonna kind of leave it be here see if we get any positive news, any positive initialization. Boot up something, something visual. Maybe there is trouble with witches. Ah, there we go. So we've got, uh, is it Buchan? Adventure Planning Service. Studio Siesta. So far, so good. We've got like a boot up screen. What I like to get to is that insert coin section, and then I feel pretty good about moving on to launch box. There we go. There's our credits. There's our potential coins. Beautiful artwork, by the way. I have no idea what it says, but it looks like it might be fun. So we'll escape to get out of this. So I feel confident I've already configured Techno Parrot. Now let's move on to the next step and make it so it works with LaunchBox. So going here into LaunchBox, you can see here the kitchen sink is dubbed uh, thoroughly. Uh, as a result, I have 74,000 games here so far. Now I haven't imported all the artwork. Uh, what I like to do is um, I will uh, try to just import it all at once. That seems to be pretty quick. But aside from going on a tangent, let's go ahead and import this. So we'll click on the hamburger menu here, go to tools, import, and then ROM files. Now we're gonna go find that executable. So I'm gonna click on add files, not add directory. And we're gonna find the, what was it, trouble with, or trouble which is AC. Now we know before we loaded it with the game.exe, which is good, so we'll click on game.exe, and that essentially is the equivalent of a ROM file. So essentially this is what, um, I've already pre-configured LaunchBox to run TechnoParrot, so it's gonna run TechnoParrot, and it's gonna give this file location as an argument, essentially the game.exe. So we'll click next. Now I'm not gonna scrape for this because I've actually found it's easier to go back in after the fact, and you know what, I'll just show you how to do that as well. So I've already pre-configured TechnoParrot. In fact, just to show you what that looks like, I can edit this. I gave it a name TechnoParrot. I gave it the location for the TechnoParrot UI, and that's it. There's nothing else specific to the emulator that I actually need to configure for LaunchBox, but I do need to configure each game manually. So we're gonna use the uh, current location and uh, we're gonna let it search for at least the metadata so it, it can match the name. I'm not gonna download the artwork just yet. And I do have a subscription to EMU Movies. I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want it to check for any artwork at this time, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to use the folder name instead of the ROM name. 
because remember the ROM name was game.exe and that's not going to be discoverable by LaunchBox in, in any form. So if I use the folder though, if I get lucky here, you'll see here the title says Trouble Witches. AC. Now I can change that name if I if I think there's one that's a little bit more appropriate, but this seems to match, so I'll go ahead and leave that as is. Click finish. And then the magic of LaunchBox. It's going to create a configuration, and then I'll show you what we have to do next. So now that it's saved the game, we have an OK. Now there's no artwork. Let's go ahead and get some artwork, and then I'll show you exactly how we can uh, get this working. So once I click edit, all I have to do here is go down to media. But before I do, let me go back to metadata and notice there is a launch box ID. So it did already match. Now, if it didn't match, let's just say, let's go over here and delete this launch box ID. You might get something like this, search for metadata. So you click on search metadata and then you get a drop down list of potential matches. Now these are duplicate matches, so I'll just pick one, but I knew that I do know this is a, um, a title type X game. So launch box has found it, which means it'll be able to find media. So I can do this two ways. I can go here directly to this machine and click download media, or I can go up to the hamburger menu, highlight all the games and say download it for everything. But I only want it for this particular machine, so we'll download the media. It's gonna query EMU movies, which can sometimes have uh, more beneficial or alternative artwork. I like to get it all. It's called Kitchen Sink for a reason. So there we go, we, got, we have some video gameplay it's gonna grab. And once we download this, it, uh, I'll have some beautiful artwork to show off in both LaunchBox and Big Box. But that doesn't mean I can play the game. The game isn't quite ready yet. There is one more thing to do. So while this is downloading, let me show you what we have to do. What I have to do is go to the user profile section. So where I've installed TechnoParrot, there's a folder called user profiles. And notice these are XML files for every game I've installed so far. So I've been pretty busy. So down here is the Troubled Witches XML file. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that name. It's just a shortcut. Since you, when you copy inside of Explorer, you're copying the file. But if you double click on it, you can change the name. I just highlight it and copy the name because the name is going to be important. So let's see here. Oh, we're on uh, path number 15. So what I've done is I've copied that profile name and I'm going to put this into LaunchBox just momentarily. Okay, we have our video, we have our media. So what I want to do is go into the launching section under the emulation section. Notice here we've already are using uh, TechnoParrot for this game. There's a section called Use Custom Command Line Parameters. What I need to type in is hyphen hyphen profile equals and the name of that XML file. See, that's a configuration file telling TechnoParrot what kind of window size and other configurations for the game. Now I left it at the default. It's going to be windowed when we start, but I can change that later. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now officially this has been configured. I've downloaded some artwork. And let's see if the game works from within LaunchBox. Right click, click on play. It seems to already be running, that's okay. That's what I like about LaunchBox. It will kill TechnoParrot, start a new instance of it. And let's see if we get a windowed version of this. Now you may be wondering, how do I change this? There's actually two ways to do it. I can manually edit the XML file, which I, I can do next, um, or I can go back into TechnoParrot, change it through the menu items, and it will save a new XML file. But since I'd like to change this for almost all my games, I'll probably do this directly from the XML. So we're getting the boot up screen. There's Studio Siesta. And then hopefully we should be greeted with our beautiful anime artwork and an insert coin feature. There we go. All right, so now I can configure uh, the game itself for the um, uh, direct input or various other options. But so far, it's imported in the launch box. Now, if I want this to go full screen, it may not work again because I'm using direct um, a remote desktop. What I can do is just simply double click on that file. I'm using something called uh, Notepad++. Notepad++. And there's a section here where it says windowed, right? And whether or not that's true. All I have to do is change that to zero and save that file. Now, if XML is too intimidating, I can go into TechnoParrot, change it from windowed to non-windowed and save the file that way. Um, and it will already be affected because I have already imported the XML into LaunchBox. But just multiple ways to do the same thing. So control S to save the file, close this out, and then I can double click this again to start the game. And then hopefully now it'll open in full screen. Now I'm not sure what it's gonna do because again, I'm on a remote desktop, but let's give it a go. See, it doesn't like it because I'm on a remote desktop, so I'm going to have to go to my arcade machine to do that. But no worries, because we do now have successful launching from LaunchBox. Enjoy. Enjoy.